All right, thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. I'm Pes. Uh, it's great to be back in Puebla. I was here in 2011. And uh, at that time, I presented some of the work that I had uh, done before then. So for this um, short period, I'm going to show some things that I've made since then, which some of you may be already familiar with. But I'm going to talk a little bit about how I get my ideas um, and how I end up making a film based on a very simple starting point. So, ever since I was a little kid, this image, whenever I saw this in a supermarket, I would think, grenades. And if I just grabbed one of them and tossed it across the supermarket, I could just totally blow the place up. And it's a little fantasy that I had and I still have every time I walk in a supermarket and I see this. And it's just one of these very strange little ideas that stuck with me. And what do I do with that? What do you do with an idea like that? A grenade as an avocado, an avocado as a grenade. To me, they become almost the same thing. But can I make you believe that that grenade is an avocado? Can I use the sounds of a real avocado? But yet, as you're looking at it, you see a grenade. And will you buy that? Will you believe it to be an avocado? So from there, I started thinking, well, OK, if I have a grenade and an avocado, what am I going to make? There's really only one answer to that question. It had to be guacamole. So that was the easy part. So then it became filling out all the other roles in the film. What's going to be the onion? What's the jalapeno? What's the tomato? And literally, I run a casting session for all these objects. Who could play the starring role of tomato or onion or, uh, or whatnot? And that's ultimately how I arrived at the idea to make this film, which I'm going to show you now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, um, so the last time I was in Puebla, this is me, I went down to uh, the antique, uh, the flea markets, and in fact, bought a lot of the props for this film right here. Um, and uh, so I found myself on a wild goose hunt for pesos to make that tree, which you saw in the film, but um, feels a little bit connected to this particular region for me. Okay, so let's move on. So a couple years later, I was in the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, and I saw a deli slicer. I said, what, what is a deli slicer doing in the Museum of Modern Art? It was in an exhibit of industrial design, and I thought it was quite a beautiful object. Um, but I immediately started thinking, what if I want to use that deli slicer? I, I got to get myself one of those things. But what would my meat be, right? So the first, what would I slice in it? 
And the first thought that I had was a boxing glove. They always reminded me of uh, meat. So I started drawing this. I like this idea, knuckles to the blade. It's a sort of symbol of, you know, male testosterone and brute force and shaving it off into these little delicate doilies. It just seemed like such an interesting visual. Again, I didn't know what to do with it. So I applied the same process. If I'm going to have my Italian ham, what could I make? Just a ham sandwich? That's pretty boring, right? I can't follow up guacamole with ham sandwich. So I had in mind what I used to eat in New Jersey where I grew up, which is a submarine sandwich, which is what we call it, and it's stacked with all different meats. And <clears throat> so I began to collect all different meats. I bought old footballs and old boxing gloves, and I started to stack them in this deli case. So I bought this deli case to, st to store my meat. And so I still didn't know exactly what I was, how I was going to make this film. How I had to make a sandwich, but I needed a deli case, so I bought a deli case first. I filled it, and then all of a sudden I started thinking, well, if I have a deli case, I guess I need a deli. So I started to buy a deli, and it began very simply. And then I started working on it. You can see building it in my studio. Starting to fill it up, light it, add more props, and then make it cluttered like a classic Italian deli. Got this, I love this hang grandma here. Put some old tennis ball lemons there, um, and we're ready to go. And then I got to the point where I was like, well, now I have a whole deli. Well, I need a butcher. So who's that going to be? And I looked around, and I was like, there was no one around, so I was like, I, I guess it's me. So. That's me. <laughs> so I decided to be the guy who makes the sandwich. And uh, the film that I ended up making, I'm going to show you right now. That's the final image. OK, let's check it out. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. And this is what it looks like shooting that. As you could uh, see, I'm actually not even standing up when I'm shooting this film. I have to sit in this chair for hours to hold my body in place so that I could... I'm, I almost feel like my calling was to be one of those statues that stand in the uh, street. Um, but let me show you, in case anyone is wondering how exciting it is to do stop motion, I wanted to show you a little behind the scenes thing here. This is what it's like for one frame. OK, 
Okay. <laughs> so you, as you can see, it's a lot of being still, and that takes hours and hours and hours of uh, meticulously controlling your body movements to, in order to create the, um, you know, the impressions you know, of these animated objects and things. So I know all of you are thinking right now, how the hell does this guy make money? <laughs> and the answer is, I don't. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no. So, the real answer to that question is occasionally clients and advertising agencies reach out and they ask me to make bastardizations of films that I've already made, <laughs> which I really don't like to do. So many agencies will come to me with an idea for, uh, hey, we want you to make a food film for our food or for our object, and those are always not that very interesting to me. I like to do things that I haven't done before. So it takes a client with an idea uh, to come and, uh, and with, with something that you haven't done before, and that's very brave for clients to do that, and it doesn't happen very often. Most of the time, people are asking me to make things that are iterations of what I've made before, but occasionally, it's something new, something totally new. So cut to uh, a year or so ago, Honda called me and wanted me to tell their entire corporate history in paper. And I had not animated anything in paper in my whole life, but because of my experience working with the other kinds of animation with objects, I said yes. And it's wonderful when a client gives you that trust and the millions of dollars to actually pull off and, um, you know, a film that is much larger in scope than what you can do or what I can do alone in my studio. Um, and so I want to leave you with one of those films right now. This is a two-minute film called Paper. Thank you so much. <laughs>